Many Buddhas come within the range of perception of the enlightening beings who are in accord with the sustaining power of morality, who have skillfully activated sympathy, compassion, and kindness, who are unsolicited good friends to all beings, who have not abandoned sentient beings, who skillfully accomplished what is to be done, who are stationed in the enlightening being stage of purity. By the enlightening being's great vision and willpower, the enlightening beings perceive enormously many Buddhas, many hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions of Buddhas, by their tremendous vision and the power of their vows. Having seen those Buddhas, they honor and pay respect and homage to them with lofty intent and provide them with the necessities, clothing, food and drink, bedding and medicine. They also provide comforts for enlightening beings and pay respect to the religious community. They dedicate these roots of goodness to unexcelled perfect enlightenment. Also, they attend those Buddhas and respectfully learn from them the ten ways of virtuous action and never forget them as they have learned them. Over countless eons, rid of the defilements of envy and bad behavior, they therefore attain purity of generosity and morality. Just as gold becomes more and more free from all impurities when put in vitriol, so do enlightening beings in this stage of purity, by virtue of riddance of the impurities of envy and bad behavior, accomplish purity of generosity and morality. Among the four means of salvation, kind speech is paramount in them. Among the ten transcendent ways, morality is paramount. This does not mean they do not practice the rest. They do so as best they can, as is appropriate. This is a brief explanation of the second stage of enlightening beings, the stage of purity. Many of the enlightening beings at this stage are sovereigns, lords of four continents and masters of the law, competent, powerful, able to rid beings of the impurities of bad behavior, to set them on the ten paths of virtuous conduct. Whatever acts the enlightening beings undertake, whether by giving or kind speech or beneficial action or cooperation, all of it is done with no other thoughts in mind but thoughts of the Buddha, the teaching, and the community. Why? To become the best of beings, unexcelled leaders and guides, and ultimately omniscient refuges. Those who seek to be thus undertake the appropriate effort by which they give up all comforts and go forth into the teaching of Buddha. Having gone forth in a single instant, they suddenly attain a thousand concentrations, see a thousand Buddhas, and recognize their power. They shake a thousand worlds, go to a thousand fields, illumine a thousand worlds, mature a thousand beings, live for a thousand eons, penetrate a thousand eons past and future, contemplate a thousand teachings, and manifest a thousand bodies each body manifesting a company of a thousand enlightening beings. Then enlightening beings with superior power of commitment by the quality of excellent vows transform their bodies, auras, mystic powers, vision, spheres of operation, voices, conduct, adornments, power, resolutions, and performances in countless ways.